Right, so if you're worried and understood, considering a surgical pathology station, kindly tell me what are your differential diagnoses that you'll consider for this patient? Ma'am, my first differential will be an infective endocarditis. My second differential will be a pulmonary tuberculosis, ma'am. Okay, and third? Ma'am, third will be a inflammatory arthropathy, ma'am. All right, so what is the criteria that you'll use to confirm your diagnosis? Ma'am, uh, for infective endocarditis, I will use Duke's criteria, ma'am. It contains major and minor criteria. In major criteria, we will take a blood culture. Uh, we're drawn for positive for the, uh, we will take blood culture, which was drawn positive for the mycobacterium. And second will be, we will take a blood culture, two blood cultures, six hours apart, which will be positive for the same right. organism for infective In endocarditis. Order- I'm sorry to interrupt you. In order for the criteria to be positive, how would you consider? How many uh, major criteria or how many minor criteria would you consider to be? Yes, please. Two, three major, one minor, ma'am, or uh, one major, through uh, three minor, or it will be a five minor, ma'am. Five minor, okay. Now tell me about the blood cultures that you were telling me. Ma'am, uh, the first, ma'am, uh, in the major criteria, it can be a, uh, there are two, one is blood culture and one one will be the eco cardio find, uh, eco findings, ma'am. First will be the blood culture. We will take a blood culture, which will be positive for the organism for infective endocarditis, or we will take the two, uh, two blood culture will be positive for the same organism, or we will take blood, three blood culture taken at one hour apart, which will be positive for blood yes. culture. Uh, what is the uh, idea behind it? Why would you do that? Three or more now, separate blood cultures drawn at least one hour apart, or two blood cultures 12 hours apart? Why? Ma'am, uh, to look for the organism, ma'am, which is causing, we, and it is through the circulation, whether there is any, uh, because we, uh, every cycle, every circulation goes through the uh, heart, uh, heart, ma'am, and we need to collect a sample which is pers- persistent and which is consistent for uh, that organism, ma'am. Okay, what are the most common organisms which cause this condition? Ma'am, it can be Staphylococcus aureus, it can be Enterococcus, it can be Haemophilus, it can be Acinobacterium, it can be Cardiobacterium, it can be Echinella, it can be Kingella, ma'am. Can you define uh, infective endocarditis? Ma'am, it is, uh, infective endocarditis is the uh, inflammation of the mural endocardium and caused by the microbacteria, my, uh, microbes resulting in vegetation formation along the uh, valves along with the mural endocardium. All right. Can you tell me how many types of infective endocarditis? Ma'am, are? there are three types of infective endo. There will be a three type of uh, ca- uh, infective endo. One is infective endocarditis. Second will be non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Third will be a Lipman sac disease, ma'am. Can you explain and tell me what is Lipman's sac endocarditis? Ma'am, Lipman sac endocarditis, ma'am, it is a, it is seen in ten percent of the cases of systemic systemic lupus erythromatosis. It is an immune complex disease, ma'am, uh, because of the form- widespread immune complex formation in SLE. The immune complex get deposited on the uh, on the uh, valves on the up, uh, both surface of the valves. It can uh, develop uh, deposit on the uh, papillary muscle, caudate tendon, or in the ventricle itself. SLE and antiphospholipid syndrome both. Okay, if you are examining the patient, which you suspect can have infective endocarditis, on the hands, what are the signs that you look for? <coughs> Ma'am, we can look for splinter hemorrhages. We can look for Osler's nodes. Osler's nodes are, ma'am, painful, painful lesions which will be seen due to the immune complex disease. And we can see, ma'am, uh, Janvey's lesion, which are seen maculopapular rashes on the hand due to hemorrhage, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this infective endocarditis, it affects uh, both native or prosthetic uh, Pathological valves. Yes. yes, ma'am. It, it includes both, ma'am. Uh, it, if it is acute, ma'am, it is involving the... Uh, uh, it is involving right. the fresh uh, valve. Can you tell me the difference in organize, the organisms involved if it involves a native valves or it, when it involves prosthetic valves? So what are the organisms involved? Here's the difference. Ma'am, uh, 
फॉर नेटिव वेल्व मैम इट इज लाइक स्टाफ ऑरियस मैम एंड फॉर द प्रोस्थेटिक वेल्व इट विल इट विल इट विल लो विरुलेंस लाइक मैम इन डेरो इट कैन बी इट कैन बी एच हैकेक ग्रुप लाइक हिमोफिलोस इन्फ्लुएंजा एटीनोबैक्टर कार्डियो बैक्टीरियम इकनेला किंग Okay, can you please tell me some risk factors which are involved or which occur because of the presence of infected endocarditis? Ma'am, uh, ma'am, it can uh, uh, infective endocarditis can be seen in ma'am the patient with congenital heart diseases like uh, like like uh, rheumatoid heart disease, ma'am. It can be seen in the case of uh, uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. It can be seen in intra uh, intravenous drug abuser. it can be seen in malignancy it can be seen in sle ma'am it can be seen in uh, 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 prostatic valve replacement patient ma'am if you do not manage or treat this patient with infective endocarditis what are the complications that that you expect to occur ma'am patient will have a, have a regurgitation patient will have a sudden mi patient uh, myocardial infarction patient can have a congestive heart failure patient can have arrhythmia patient can have have a sepsis what are the known complications that you will get to see or get to expect ma'am uh, what are the sorry ma'am non cardiac complications ma'am it can be uh, it can be gl- uh, glomerular nephritis ma'am it can be glomerular nephritis it can so, be uh, stroke ma'am it can be mesenteric ischemia ma'am injury acute injury etc Okay. Yes. Uh, what is the treatment options that you can offer to the patient? Ma'am, uh, we need to start the patient on a, a IV medications uh, according to drug sensitivity, ma'am. Okay. For how long? Six weeks, ma'am. What are the restrictions that you will keep in your mind? Ma'am, as uh, valves doesn't have their independent blood supply, so it is a deep infection, and the bacteria is lying inside the. vegetation and because of the uh, thrombotic meshwork over the uh, over the vegetation the phagocytotic action of the uh, neutrophils are very poor in that which so, leads to poor response to the antibiotics yes then what would you do what measures would you do ma'am uh, well, uh, if still after even giving the 6 weeks of antibiotic i will discuss it in the mdt board if still uh, after uh, according to a trust policy as well as the culture sensitivity if still patient is not responding we need to do the prim- removal of the primary pathology if it is a if it is a prostatic valve we might need to remove the valve to look for uh, to remove the septic foci uh, that prostatic valve comes afterward this is patient with the neck of uh, uh, valve and what uh, okay uh, general or conservative or medical management has failed what would you offer now ma'am if it is it it is failed ma'am we need to go for transplant heart transplant ma'am heart transplant comes after first you then valve the replacement valve replacement okay valve re- you've done the valve replacement right uh, and then it was mitral regurgitation you done the valve replacement and mitral valve replacement now patient because patient had the uh, ccf no patients congestive cardiac failure is becoming worse now what are the options that you can offer to the patient ma'am if it is uh, congestive heart failure got worse after the replacement ma'am ma'am we need to uh... no need Trans- heart transplant. Transplant. Heart Now, transplant. Now, yes. So, what is most important when you will consider heart transplant and the matching? Ma'am, uh, because uh, heart for heart transplant we need to go for HLA matching. HLA uh, matching, matching yes. ma'am. HLA mat- matching, ma'am. And we need to start the patient on immunosuppression in the post-op period, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Well, then good. then there there are a whole lot of questions with the transplant that what you should keep in your mind what are the immunosuppressants ma'am we can give cyclophosphamides we yes. can give mycophenolate phenolate motif we can give uh, cyclouracil there are a lot of drugs we checked on yes. uh, dna direct dna four classes of immunosuppressants drugs that you should be knowing or they can ask and then there are basic questions about heart transplant uh, what is hyperacute rejection what is 
Acute rejection. Ma'am, hyper acute rejection is due to preformed antibodies in the recipient, ma'am, and acute is due to humoral immunity, and uh, chronic is due to uh, this uh, cytotoxic immunity, cytotoxic. All right. T when there is cells. a failure or rejection, uh, how would you determine if it's an acute or when it becomes chronic? Ma'am, uh, uh, there will be increase in the electrolytes, ma'am. There will be a, a, a oozing from the surgical field in the acute, ma'am. And in the chronic, ma'am, there will be increased in the electrolyte imbalance. There will be acute cardiac, uh, acute failure, ma'am. If it is a renal transplant, there will be a, incru, a increase in the urea, blood, urea nitrogen, acute blood, urea so nitrogen, ma'am. And we can see 6-6, yeah, six, six, ma'am. Okay, in the first six weeks, which organism can infect? Uh, Ma'am, first six weeks, it is a uh, uh, CMV. No, it's uh, e e v yeah, Epstein Barr virus. And after six after six weeks, it is CMV. Name, no abbreviation. Cytomegalovirus. Sorry, cytomegalovirus. And here is your question. 